Is there no good people in this world? Not is there at, is there no one good? There are a few, but not at the pharmaceutical companies. Well, that seems like an overgeneralization of the pharmaceutical companies. Apologies to anyone working in a pharmacy right now. <laughs> Actually, yes, my pharmacy people are awesome. That you know of. They got me drugs today. <sighs> Hello and welcome to another edition of Popcorn Bucket List. Spooky season is almost to a close here, but we got uh, one more scary thing to talk about here today and helping us talk about it. I, I don't know. He wanted to do an intro thing. I have no idea what he's, what he's doing now. See, he's trying not to break. He's trying to be serious. That's don't cool. break. Don't break. Don't laugh. Don't laugh. Anyways, David, joining us here today is David. Is he doing? Is he doing it? Is he still? He's doing it. I, is this it? Is this the intro? This is it. Oh, oh there it is. All right. All right. Yeah, cool. A lot of build up for that. Uh, <laughs> I had anyway. a different intro in mind, just so you know. Yeah, <laughs> but then you wanted like walkout music, like WWE, oh, and we just don't. Cool. We don't have that in the budget. We don't even have a smoke machine. Cool. We don't even have a smoke machine. We don't even have curtains. Our intern didn't even bring us drinks today. Yeah, I know, right? Can you believe that? New intern Jeez. today. Unfortunately, Carter is out. Get well soon, buddy. Uh, Sooner the better. Yeah. We don't have to deal with this jabroni anymore. Yeah. I'm just kidding. That's fellow Omni Entertainment uh, producer up there, Mitch. He's running the board for us today. And uh, like I said, joining us, special guest this week, David, because this weekend we're going to be heading over to the pizzeria. We're going to be spending five nights at Freddy's here. Oh. That's the big premiere. You uh, you kind of told me you were like a five nights at uh, Freddy's expert, something like that. I Novice said, expert. I said no. that was. I said that in the moment. No. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, now you're going to have to back it up. But now you have to. You've laid in your bed. Time to lie in it. All right. I know a lot about Five Nights at Freddy's. We'll I'm not an we'll expert. There we'll are more see. people that. We'll see. I, I, I mean, yeah. And that's that's very humble of you to say. And I, I think that's good. I think that's good of you. But uh, we're going to see how much you can back that up here today. This is something I've been wanting to try for quite a while now, and I think this is the perfect opportunity to it. do it. Uh, I don't really have a – this is how last minute this is. I didn't even come up with a title. It, we're just calling it PBL Trivia, I guess. Ooh. Um, I, we'll, we'll, we'll workshop that. Trivia. We'll workshop that later. No, I like that PBL. All right. Here's the challenge All right. presented to you. I'm ready. I'm going to ask you five questions. Now, follow me on this. I like to make rules a little bit complicated because I think that's very complicated. So let me know if I lose you guys at any point here. I'm going to ask you five name. questions. You have the opportunity to win at max a $25 gift card at the Marshall Six Theater provided by moi and PBL here, um, a.k.a. the PBL budget, which yep. is basically yeah, it's very it's small. Me, it's me. Yeah, it's very <laughs> small. Smaller than we maybe should be. Yeah. Uh, anyways. Uh, but yeah, basically, I'm going to ask you five questions. I'm just going to ask you the question outright. If you can answer it right away, that's five dollars for one question. And therefore, if you get all five questions without any help, that's five dollars each. That's twenty five dollars total. Are, are you asking questions? Let's yeah, save all questions to the end here, maybe. All right. And then, <laughs> and I'm sure you will. I'm not doubting that you won't. Won't just just wait till wait till the end. Here. All right. All right. Uh, if you need help, I also have multiple choice. But if you get it right first time after using multiple choice, it goes down to four dollars. Every time you get it wrong, gets knocked down to one. So at at minimum, you're going to get one dollar from each question. So at minimum, minimum. out of this, we're going to get you a five dollar gift card that you can use at the Marshall Six Theater to purchase a ticket for five nights at Freddy's if you so choose. All right. Any questions? Like right away or do I have like a five-minute time? Uh, like you know, I was debating that. You um, get a reasonable amount of time. If I feel like it's going too long, yeah. I, I may just tell you to wrap it up here. But hey, Like you can do edit, edit it later, you know. It's like five yeah, you minutes. Could, you could like sit there and think about it for three hours, I guess, or you can just edit it and make it look like 30 seconds. Exactly. I don't know. This is, this is the trial run of this. So, uh, right, okay, let's try this. We can always retake it. Well, there it is. All right. Yes. All right. Yeah, that's my trivia music I, I got here today. So Let's go. Like I said, trying a bunch of new stuff here today. That's good. That's good. I like the trial run here, people. We don't know. <laughs> All right. So first question. Again, five questions. In the Five Nights at Freddy's games, there is someone known as the phone guy in the first two games. Who voices the phone guy? Scott Cawthon. That is correct. 
right out of let's the gate. Let's go. Dog, right out of some. the gate. Okay. Let's thought, go. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I thought that was one of the harder ones. <laughs> who's, who's Scott Kaufman? Uh, Scott Kaufman. Well, yeah, why don't you take this away? This is actually kind of a fun fact here. Yeah, this will be important for later because I'll be talking about it. Scott Kaufman is the... Um, he basically created Five Nights at Freddy's. Okay. So yeah. He's, he, the, he's, the, he's creator, the creator. He's all that, the creator. Yeah. Of the video game. Yes. Okay. And the movie. And the movie. Oh, so he, okay. He's, yeah, so he's the main in. guy. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, it's all his. Okay. Like I said, I thought that was one of the tougher ones. So I have a feeling, I have a feeling I'm going to be spending the max amount of money here. All right. What month slash year, you don't have to give me the exact day, but what month year did the first Friday Nights at Freddy's game release? 2014. Okay, but what was the month? August. That is also correct, yes. Dog, let's go! I uh, should have made these tougher. Dude, you're crushing it. <laughs> including, oh, shoot, okay. Uh, including the spinoff games, how many games are there? Including the spinoff games? Including the spinoff games. Like, are we... And remember, you can guess, and then if you want multiple choice after that, it would just drop down then. I just have a question. To be I sure. can't promise I'm going to answer no, it or because not. Because when... Um, there are certain troll games that Scott Cawthon has released that has something to do with the games. Did you include that in as a spinoff mm-hmm. or not including those? Because that changes the question. I just looked up how many games there were and most, and there was like multiple of them that had this exact answer. All right. So mainline without spinoffs. Three hours later. Are we talking? I can only give you so many hints, yeah, man. Yeah, you can you can just go straight to just, multiple choice. Yeah. Take a couple of guesses. No, I'm not. <laughs> I like I'm it. thinking of the, the AR the game counts as one. Let's say eleven. Incorrect. Ooh. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I got to make that a little bit louder. Like I yeah. said, trial run. Okay, so do you want the, the multiple choice answers then? Yes. All right. Uh, you already guessed 11. That was one of my other ones. Uh, B, 12, C, 13, or D, 14? I'm going to get this wrong, but 12. Unfortunately, that is incorrect <laughs> as well. Uh, you can guess again, either 13 or 14. 14. That is also yeah, I knew it. it was thirteen. I knew it. I was get that it was thirteen. Wrong. It's get always that wrong. C. It was thirteen. It's always C. When in doubt, pick C. Yes. Yes. All right. Two Sorry, more questions. Try. Two more try. questions. Right. You're still doing pretty good. You're still yeah, doing. Questions. You're still doing pretty good. Uh, which character has creator Scott Cawthorn said frightened him Bonnie. the most? That is correct. Who? Didn't even finish. Bonnie is the correct answer. He said he has had nightmares about this character. Okay. It was the multiple. First times it was the first creator he uh it was the first character he created too right. i believe yes that is also that is also oh, correct. very good no uh bonus points there but you do get props <laughs> in my book so um, you're up to 16 right yes that is correct you're up to right. 16 dollars right now so you have a chance to increase it to 21 here for a marshall six theater gift card final question how many actual playable nights are there in the first five nights at freddy's this is according to a wiki fandom page. Oh, so. I don't think this is viable. Um, <laughs> like, base. Okay, so the game is called Five Nights at Freddy's. Yes. There is a sick. There is a sixth night, and you can also do custom night, which is you can choose what level of difficulty each animatronic is. So if you're talking about base game, it's five. No, base game six. And then if you want to include Custom Night 7, but I'm guessing you didn't include that. So in the first Five Nights at Freddy's game, there are six nights you can play. I'm going to give it to you because you did say seven. It is seven because I did include that, actually. Yeah, because the Custom Night, you can play several times yeah. over. And it's but, like infinite. But that is kind of like a one. But I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give you the five points on that one because hey, 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 I'm, not, I'm not going to base Woo! that off of what you thought I was thinking. That is the correct answer. Five hey. points on that one that totaling. Was- yeah, that was very, very good. I'm impressed. One dollars there. I'm Mr. impressed. Six. I'm gonna get you that later this week. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Let's take a quick minute here and talk about the Marshall Six Theater here in Marshall, Minnesota. The leaves are changing color, which means fall has officially arrived as we enter into the month of October. 
more spooky kind of movies may be showing up here on most uh, channels and at most theaters. But don't worry, because movies of all genres and for all ages will always be available over at the Marshall Six Theater. Also, as the temperatures tend to go down a little bit more, feel free to escape the weather by heading indoors and enjoying some very warm concessions, snacks, and comfy seats. And uh, enjoy a flick while you're there as well. So head on over to the Marshall Six Theater here in Marshall, Minnesota. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. So let me ask you go. this silly question. Is this a computer game or an Xbox game? Okay. Or so uh, let's actually get into that here because <laughs> that was all I had for the opening spotlight here. We were trying out this trivia thing for the first time. Thank you, David. Great job. Great job. I should have added an applause sound effect on that one. I, I don't know why. There we go. There we go. Congratulations. Uh, we'll get you that gift card here so you can check out that movie. But let's actually use that question to transition right into the weekly preview. We don't have much more to talk about here. So I figure we can go a little bit more deeper dive into this as uh, you have kind of implied you want to here. So why don't you, before we get into the movie itself, let's talk a little bit about the game because this has been a pretty big game. And as you've kind of told me, has way more lore than I expected yes. for many, many years. So uh, why don't you kick us off, David? What's uh, kind of your first thoughts on Five Nights at Freddy's? So when thinking before I came to this podcast, I was thinking, are you going to want like, the short version or the abridged version? Or like, what do you want to know? Because it'll be easier for me to explain everything. Because the first movie... Why don't, I guess I would assume the first movie is going to be based mainly on that first game. So let's focus on the first game a little bit. To intervene that comment, there are aspects of games, recent games even, that are also part of the movie that it brings which, certain aspects. Which parts... Do you think um, there is a character that has been confirmed in the movie that shares a name with a character in the most recent one of the most recent games? So it kind of, it's kind of, oh, kind of all three. a blend. Yeah. yeah. But it, the movie I'm pretty sure is going to focus on the first three games, the first three kind of concepts. Yeah. Of it's the like games. a trilogy almost. Yeah. You know? okay. A trilogy and a one. Yeah. But it'll be like FNAF one movie. Yeah. Bringing in stuff from all the other games, but yeah. it will be like the beginning, like the yeah. FNAF 1 to 3 games. Yeah. And FNAF means Five Nights at Freddy's because I can't keep on saying that. Yeah. No. Yeah. You're good. <laughs> that, so that, is guys, a, that is a much yeah. quicker way to say I I started typing out Five Nights at Freddy's on all these things, and then I was just like, okay, let's just do the acronym yeah, here. Just yeah. Say, just say FNAF. It, <laughs> it saves a lot of time. It does. It does indeed. Um, okay. So, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a scary game. It's a... A point of view, first person point of view game, correct? Yes. So essentially, it's you going through a, a late night shift at essentially. I mean, they're go they're basing it off like the Chuck E. Cheese look. Yeah. So right? the history about the game itself is that the creator Scott Cawthon, uh previously he had a game that did really poorly, um, and one of the comments said, "Your characters look like they're animatronics from Chuck E. Cheese's." So he ran with the idea and created a horror game. Um, and th that that's where he created Bonnie and then the nightmare you're talking about. And that just kind of rolled into Five Nights at Freddy's. And that came out on August 8th, 2014. Let that be a lesson, kids. Take your darkest comments and uh, make Let them your biggest you. make them your biggest strengths. Yeah. Let me ask you, have you guys ever been to a Chuck E. Cheese? Yes. I've been to a couple when I was yep. a kid, yeah. Uh, and there was also another one, uh, another animatronics. Oh, I can't. Giggle Bees. That's what it was called, Giggle Bees. Is that the one in Sioux Falls? I, or am maybe. I thinking of a different one? It's the one with the... With like the, the, like the coyote yes. on the trike. The, yeah. That coyote actually kind of looks like one of the I characters think, from Five Nights at yeah. Freddy's, now that I think about it, too. Yeah. No, uh, um, yeah. The coyote, like, came up to your table, too, which was yeah. actually almost creepier. I kind of preferred the... The far away Jesus one. Just kind of... Just over in, there. In their realm. Yeah. I'm in mine. Just let me play my Star Wars game. Funny. Um, but yeah, so it, it's a horror movie franchise like we kind of talked about earlier. It started in 2014 and has a, had a lot of spinoffs here. So it was only a matter of time before it got turned into a movie, yeah. which will be premiering this weekend, Friday, October 27th, Five Nights at Freddy's. Uh, it's been a while since we've done this. A theater's side-by-side -side Peacock release. Correct. Yep. Now- it's also, been a while. it has been a little bit, but also wasn't this, didn't this originally have an R rating and then it got dropped down to PG-13? There are, there are several things about that because this movie 
it's been a long time in the making. Yes. Like eight years, I believe. Yeah, something crazy. The, yeah. the rights first went to Warner Brothers. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, then some like a lo- lot of scripts went by, and the creator of Scott, Co- uh, the creator Scott Cawthon, he read tons of scripts. Didn't like anyone. There was one like plushie just took over Manhattan or something like that. It was huh. crazy. It was funny. <laughs> and he's like, "What? How? What am I going to do with this? You know?" Yeah. <laughs> so what happened is that uh, they ha- something happened in Warner Bros. So the rights went to. Blumhouse, mm-hmm. and uh, I think there was at least two other directors before this current director, so it changed hands. Mm-hmm. A few times. And I believe they're going to start production in 2019, but since COVID-19 happened, they didn't do it until, like, 2022, start filming. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. a lot of history. Yeah, it, this is, like you kind of mentioned, one of those movies that have just gone through a de- developmental heck, as we like to call it, and yeah. passed around a lot. But the thing I like about this as opposed to most movies that go through this sort of process and keep changing hands is a large part of the reason, and you alluded to this as well, was because Scott, the creator, was like, was like hands-on, was like, no, I don't like this. This doesn't work. This doesn't work. So this gives me hope. If you told me that a video game or a movie adaptation of a video game that changed hands for over eight years and kept going through a bunch of rewrites was coming out this year, I'd be like, yeah. well, that's an automatic failure. Yep. Just I, that's that sounds Debbie Downer of me, but that's just what history has shown us. And here, because Scott's kind of been a part of the process, and he obviously, I mean, he's been making spinoffs and signing off on these books and everything. He knows this franchise. He knows how to do it. That gives me a little bit more hope that uh, this renaissance we've been seeing this year, especially video game adaptations of movies that have been doing well. I think the trend's going to continue here. Call I me an, think so, too. Call me an optimist. I like to think of myself as a realist. Yep. But uh, that's uh, that's my take on it. Well, and I think, too, like uh, Halo came out, even though it wasn't a film, but as a TV series. A lot of people didn't like it, but it still got picked up for a second season. I'm sorry. I heard that show was so bad. <laughs> it was, it's okay. I heard but, it was uh, so bad. I'm sorry. Did you, know, did you ever see District 9? No, I that haven't. was originally supposed to be the Halo movie, and then, like you said, oh, could you imagine if we gotten a found footage Halo movie? It, like that, that would have been so that much been better. So sweet. That would have been so much better. Yeah, it ended up changing directors, different studios, and then just let's just make it a sci-fi space monsters. But if you cycle out the monsters for um, the covenant and like it's like yeah i could i could see i could see something here Mm -hmm. uh so let's talk a little bit more about uh, five nights at freddy's here a little bit more of the lore so the trailer of this uh movie yes david before we move on thank you for raising your hand by the way usually you just kind of interrupt me when we talk so i I want to see a little bit more of this in the real world as well uh, if possible it took me a whole year to get here (laughs) it did it 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 took me a whole year it was because of nick (laughs) all right so i just wanted to say that uh, before we move on um the Jim Henson Company was actually brought on to be I, on this movie. I almost made that one of my trivia questions here, but yeah, a great puppeteers. Uh, the Jim Henson Company, yeah, they did a lot of live action work with these puppets, which I think is another kind of check mark in the "this is going to be good" column because mm-hmm. I feel like it's creepier with practical effects when you look at these animatronics yeah. and everything like that. Yeah. Um, but let's get into the horror element here just a little bit as well. Um, so the trailer kind of implied there was almost like a spiritual or maybe demonic kind of thing. Is that prevalent in the games? Was that always a thing or was it just these things came to life? Was that ever introduced or is this new for the movie? You know, before I pe- before I came on this podcast about the subject, I was thinking, how much should I tell them about? Because if I tell you guys certain aspects of the game, well, it might okay, but this this okay. So don't go into detail. But is the because in the trailer specifically, what I'm refer- referencing to is the missing kids portion of it okay. that may be possessing these animatronics. Was that ever a thing in the game specifically? So, in the gameplay, no. But no. in the lore and story, because in the early early games, Map One, Two, and Three, you you really didn't get any. Uh, you get important any story, yeah, yeah. You don't. You didn't get that. You just like heard of stuff like, oh, this happened. Mm, you yeah. know, like last week or this week or yeah. what are you even still doing here? You know. Yep. Um, but uh, no, I would say that's not new. This is just like common. So, so it's been prevalent, but here they're going to actually dive into it in the story as he's going through. Yeah. Okay, no, so this will be more story. Focused. That's kind of that's kind of interesting. I think.
impacting local and regional communities. Building connections with peers, professors, and community members. Collaboration with like-minded individuals. Opportunities to make a difference both in and outside of the classroom. Experiential learning. Student-led organizations and projects. Find out more on the upcoming podcast series focused on the Center of Innovation and Entrepreneurship at SMSU. Um, how many nights do you think you guys could survive in a, in a place like this? How many nights, like if we were kind of in a real world scenario here, do you think, how many real nights would you go till scenario. you called it quits? Well, I would leave like before I even got there. <laughs> it is, not even it is a very building. scary environment. That is true. It is a very scary environment. Picture, yeah, yeah picture a Chuck E. Cheese, but it's been abandoned for about twenty years, yeah. at least. And, and then you have twelve to six shift at night. Like I'm, I'm good. Thanks. See, I'm a night owl. The twelve to six thing doesn't bother me as much if the pay was right. But imagine this. Okay. It's pitch black. Yeah. You only have two lights. Yeah. If you press a light, it only flickers and it goes back to black. You run out. You're running out of power because you only have a certain amount of power each night, and you have two doors that you can close. But if here's, you use those doors, that electricity will also go by faster. Here's the thing, though. I grew up on a farm. I'd just bring a generator from home. Uh, I, I, I guess <laughs> I'd prop open one of the doors with a statue or something you'd, like that. Yeah. I'd innovate. I'd figure something out. You'd, have, you'd have to do that. Like, it was in the day. It, the, the, yeah. I, yeah. Obviously, it, it wouldn't be the lights or the lack of power that would freak me out. The animatronics maybe a little bit, but then I'd just be like, I'd like taser them and short circuit them a little <laughs> bit, maybe. I don't know. I don't know where to get a taser. But. Just for the lore, you can't do that to these animatronics. They're not affected. Okay, okay, that's fair. Let's make this a little bit more challenge. I don't. I, I, obviously, I want to sound brave and say I'd survive the full five nights. I'd maybe get through three. And that's not counting. Before I'd like call in yeah. sick and then try it again another day. Yeah. Something like that, probably. And that's not even taking into account all the noises you hear. You see, the noises don't. The noises wouldn't bother me. No, like these I, guys are loud. I recently worked in a place though that was like kind of a late night shift. It wasn't like twelve to six. It was like only till like eleven p.m. And it had noises. And there's people trying to tell me that, oh, there's ghosts here. There there's, are ghosts there. Are you? Do you know the place I'm talking about though? I'm pretty sure. Well, I know one of the places. Yes, hundred percent. It's not the Marshall Six Theater. Well, that one has a ghost. No, it doesn't. It does. It has a paper drawing of a ghost in one of the projection booths. That doesn't count. But, yeah, I'm talking about the real ghost, not that fake ghost. There is no real ghost. There's a real ghost. I've been there many a night. No ghost. There's a ghost. No ghost. Been there many a night. No ghost. Maybe we should make that the spinoff. Six nights at Marshall Six. Six (laughs) nights. Six nights at CEC. <laughs> Six nights at CEC. You have no okay. idea how many fan games there are. Out. I was going to say, oh, I yeah. So I, I was going to say, because it's a very easy kind of game to make. It is just kind of point of view. It is very dark, so it doesn't have to be too detailed. And it's just kind of, okay, go around here, do this, make sure this, run away from the monsters. And that is kind of nice about a lot of computer-based horror games. Like Slender Man, plot's pretty simple there. Find the pages. Stay mm-hmm. away from the Slender Man. Rinse, repeat. For yep. the first games. That's true. It, it, it changes yeah, later that's true. on. That's true. To more story, to more story focused content. Um, anything else we got to say about uh, <laughs> this movie or uh, how much we're looking forward to it or anything? Uh, you you can anything. okay continue, Dave. Oh, are we moving on from like the game or in talking about the movie now? We get to have a little bit more about the movie oh, okay. specifically. I would say. Tell me when you want to know about gameplay. This is what I brought this for. Oh, yeah. That's Ooh, right. gameplay. Let's see I, it. I do have to bring this. Yeah, you you came prepared here. You brought uh, uh, some props. I do appreciate props. Why don't, you, why don't you show us what you got here? Let's see it. All right. This is the FNAF 1 location map and the routes that these animatronics take to kill you. Ooh. You probably put it between you and Ryan. Probably the best place to see it camera-wise. Yeah. I'll hold it. All, All right. right. There you go. So I don't know. If we're, this we're is the good. office. Yeah. Okay. This is where you're at. All right. The animatronics are over here. This is Bonnie, this is Freddy, and this is Chica. 
And this is Foxy. Foxy stays by himself over here. So it's these three and then this. Kind of feel bad for Foxy now. But. So Foxy's gimmick is Foxy's gimmick is that you have to look at him on the cameras to stop him in his tracks because he will run towards you down to West Hall to you. So you got to stop him in his tracks and he'll steal your power if he reaches you or just kill you. Bonnie <laughs> takes this long route. <laughs> That's kind of a... Yeah. <laughs> okay. Ta- uh, Bonnie takes this long route uh, on the West he- area here. And then Chica goes to the restroom for some reason, goes eat pizza in the kitchen in the East Hall and then she'll come here. Freddy is different. You can't see Freddy usually. You usually just see his glowing his white eyes. eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and he usually s- goes to the women's restroom. Smart guy. For some Creeper. reason. And then he goes to the kitchen. And then uh, Fr- Freddy is different because you can't see him when he's right outside your door. So that's what I was saying. You you could be staring into darkness and be staring in and like, staring the face at of him. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't think you would survive. Um, and then this is a spoiler, so I won't say that. And I drew the little pictures. Yeah, those are nice. Uh-huh. How much of that do you think is going to be kind of in this movie here, do you think? That's exactly why I wanted to make this. Because we, I, I'm kind of curious now, too, because it does... What I do love about this gameplay, the way you kind of describe it, is it's four separate challenges that kind of spread you out. You can't... You have to almost change up your strategy with each, each one. And I think that would be... I think it'd be pretty foolish of them not to include something like that in, uh, in the movie here. Yeah, the thing about the movie, the most important thing about the movie, in my opinion, is that there's no East Hallway. It's just one hallway like this. Mm. And the kitchen, like this whole dining area is different because Foxy Cove is right next to the show stage. So that changes the whole dynamic on how it's going to be. And plus there are certain uh, content from the third FNAF game that's also going to appear in the movie that's going to change the whole thing up too. But uh, I think if they put the important uh, important details like Freddy's laugh or uh, certain things that you can tell that they've been thinking about and done mm-hmm. right. I think it'll be like a nine out of 10 movie if it's done right. But yeah. yeah. Like I said, I'm, I'm hopeful for it. I don't say that very much, especially uh, for scary movies and especially for uh, movies based on video game activi- adaptations. But uh, uh, I'm hoping, I'm hoping this is, I'm hoping this will be worth the wait. Which one's the hardest? The hardest to, uh, to like beat or would that be, I'm going to bet. Wouldn't that be Freddy? Because you said you can't see him outside in the East Hallway. Yeah, so, I feel like that's, so if the, you got invisibility so in, powers, that's, uh, that's the, a slam dunk. Yeah, so in the fr- so like I said, you're in this office, right? You're stuck in this office until 6 a.m. So you have to make sure your power doesn't go out. Because if your power goes out, all the doors open and everything turns black in your office. And Freddy will come and kill you if, if uh, the power goes out. So the first night... Usually only only Bonnie is active. The second night, it's usually just Chica. And then the third night, you're usually going between uh, Bonnie and Chica. Like, they're always here. Mm-hmm. And uh, if an animatron, if you shut the doors, those doors waste a lot of power. Like, a lot, mm-hmm. a lot of power. Okay. And, like, they can just, like, go back and forth here and there. Yeah. And they kind of just, like, wait you out. Interesting. But they usually go away. But uh, the hardest character, I believe... Foxy's pretty easy. You just have to keep looking at him with the camera. But uh, not too long because if you have your camera up, th- your doors are open. So any animatronic that's Bonnie or Chica can come and kill you here. Mm. But uh, Foxy, once he starts running, like he, like a mad dash, he just runs right at like um, like like the Flash. Like faster Ooh. than the Flash. He's just like... <laughs> So you have to, you got to be careful with him. And uh, once he he arrives at your door, he takes power. So you have to keep watching him. Freddy is the hardest because you don't see him. And uh, I was gonna say, once you have invisibility power powers, that's a uh, that's a tough crack. Yeah. To, that's a yeah. tough egg to crack. And uh, he only moves when he laughs. So you hear a creepy Ooh. laugh. And you know he's you know moved. he's moving, but yeah. you still can't see him. You still, That's you terrifying. Can't see him. You just That's hear terrifying. Him. Yeah. I don't like that. Like uh, if you uh, YouTube Freddy laugh, Freddy laughs combination um, at night at three a.m. Definitely not gonna do that. <laughs> yeah, you definitely have, you not ha- gonna do <laughs> you're that. You're not gonna have a good time. <laughs> no, I don't think I will. Hey, we talk a lot about movies on this channel, but sometimes the ones we talk about aren't the most accessible. That's where the Marshall Lyon County Library comes in handy. They have a great collection of physical media, as well as a couple of online services with many, many options for movies, TV shows, and documentaries. It's easy. 
Just get your own library card at the Marshall Lyon County Library and gain access to their large variety of movies, TV shows, and of course, books. Also, be sure to check back every month as we here at Popcorn Bucket List make specific movie recommendations based on a monthly theme. This month, we're talking about Halloween-themed movies for all ages. So head on over to the Marshall Lyon County Library for some of our favorites and check out the channel to get even more movie recommendations. And now, on with the show! Uh, but let's keep moving along here and let's talk about a few other things uh, coming out this weekend. Like I said, overall, pretty slow weekend. Friday, uh, not Friday, Five Nights at Friday's. Uh, will be the big thing here, but also coming out here to Netflix, uh, Pain Hustlers. Emily Blunt and Chris Evans star in this true story of a down-on-her-luck mother and daughter. She starts work at a bankrupt pharmacy that, through some shady practices, becomes a big company with some real Wolf of Wall Street vibes. Yes, like a cheap Wolf of Wall Street vibes. A little bit, yeah. It's hard because I like Chris Evans and I like Emily Blunt, so... But this is this is very much Wolf of Wall Street. Like I could intercut, oh, yeah. I can intercut scenes from that movie right here, and yeah. I don't think anyone would notice. Yeah, which begs the question: Considering how Wolf of Wall Street was also kind of based on a true story, how many more of these we rise up, we do drugs, we fall into a pool, FBI comes, stories are there? Is there no good people in this world? Not is there I- is there no one good? There are a few, but not at the pharmaceutical companies. Well, that seems like an overgeneralization of the pharmaceutical companies. Apologies to anyone working in a pharmacy right now. <laughs> Actually, yes, my pharmacy people are awesome. That you know of? They got me drugs today. <sighs> Ryan's sick, by the way. Yeah, so there's you know, a, just so you know, a lot of context yeah, to that yeah. one. Don't be calling up Nick and be like, Ryan's on drugs? Yeah. <laughs> oh, we didn't do our... Uh, <laughs> We forgot to do the monthly drug tests that we have on this show here, I guess. We may have to start doing that again. It's bad, Ryan. Well, I did not Ryan. forget. I just didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going off the rails here. Uh, yeah, so like I said, uh, Chris Evans also stars in this. I know he's known for being the good guy in Hollywood. He seems like a nice person in real life, best known as Captain America. But, man, I, loves it. I love him when he yeah. plays a bad guy. Yep. When he plays a jerk. And he was in that you're, Netflix you're not, movie. You're not as much? He was in that Netflix movie as the bad guy too. Yep, he was that. Was, he was the, he was the the bad guy and the gray man. Uh, he was the, the ba- man. he was one of the bad guys in Scott Pilgrim versus the World. Yep. One of my favorite characters there. Or one See, of the that cool one you guys, approve of, depending on how you look at it. <laughs> One he, of the got bad guys up, or he got one beat of the up cool by guys. Scott Pilgrim. He lost all street Well, cred. he was cool up until that yeah, point. He was cool up until that point. But I don't know. There's others, but for some reason, I just yeah. I love it when the good guys play bad guys. It's yeah. just funny to me. Yep. But uh, I don't know. You seem like, what, what, were you, what were you looking at there? You, you weren't as uh, as in agreement there? Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I only see Chris Evans as Captain America. Like that's, He is Captain yeah, America. Okay. He is. And, and sorry, when, Anthony when I, Mackie. When I view him. Like in a like in the gray man, I felt he kind of felt flat. I'm mm. sorry. Oh yeah, it's just I like see Chris it. Evans no, is like that flat line. You know, it's like someone makes a joke, and it's not funny. That's Chris Evans. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I love Chris Evans. <laughs> Captain America, he's my favorite superhero. But that's just like as a bad guy, I don't. I well, like here, 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 here he's more of a corporate bad guy, so maybe that'll mm-hmm. be different. Like a thug, he's more like a thug bad guy. More like a. Uh, Blue, what was it, blue collar bad guy? White collar. White collar. There we go. I don't know where I came up with blue collar. I don't know where that was. That would be like the guy that fixes Chris Evans' car. car. Yeah, that's a mechanic. That's blue collar. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I apologize to the, the blue collar uh, people of America. Yeah, like I come should. On, bro. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> uh, also coming out here this weekend, also to Netflix, Yellow Door, Lo-Fi Film Club. In the early 1990s, there was a growth in the love of film amongst young Korean people, so they created film clubs like the Yellow Door Film Club. One of those members, Bong Joon-ho, who has won many Oscars since then, including Best Mm -hmm. Picture, I want to say a couple times, for sure once for Parasite. Uh, But yeah, this is a documentary that basically gives him his origin story. Yeah. Now, it's him telling his origin story, which I think is a little egotistical. Kind of meta. Kind of meta. We, we'll call it meta. <laughs> but uh, It's just like that one scene with the feet, with the director, and uh, he played. Who was that again? Quinn Tarantino. Quinn Tarantino? Yeah. yeah oh, where he's in a scene where, there, where there's feet involved. Yeah, yeah, that's just. 
I don't know if that's egotistical. That's just kind of like creepy. which one's worse, you know? I'd rather Bong Joon Ho just kind of propping himself up than uh, Quentin Tarantino living out his fantasies while I paid him for it. Agree to disagree. <laughs> We're not going to get into that <laughs> conversation. Um, anyways, this this documentary looks pretty fascinating to me. Uh, like I said, it gives kind of an early history of Korean film and specifically Korean filmmakers, which I think has grown into one of the bigger uh, markets here. Um, I mean, how many times do we look on Netflix and there's always an anime or an animated film or just a Korean film in general? I think it has sneakily become uh, a top provider of cinema mm-hmm. throughout the world here. And uh, to see... That not only did Bong Joon Ho, but other filmmakers came from like this cor- sort of revolution. You know, yep. it seems like every part of the world kind of has that cinema revolution. Theirs came a little bit later than most, I would say, but hey, yeah. it still it still had a positive effect. I would say. Yes, David. I would actually say that. Uh, I, I think like it's, this habit. I like this. <laughs> I would say that uh, Netflix is actually putting barriers because there are different shows and movies you can't watch. In other countries, like here in the U.S., you can't uh, watch that. That is that is a fair point. Yeah, a- unless point. you have a VPN, which yeah. that's a whole. I mean, if you know what you're doing, it's easy to do. But like, yeah, that is a fair point. I mean, how many times are there like movies you would think are pretty accessible here in America that are not, and how much we're missing out because they're not allowing some uh, foreign films that are kind of specific to those regions. So I do think that mm-hmm. is, I that's do think that point. is an interesting point. Um, uh, what do you think about this one here, though? Do you think, uh, I don't know, how interested do you guys kind of check it out this one? I think it's going to be cool. I like some of those. He almost is like, uh, he reminds me of like a director like Peter Jackson where he just went out and filmed stuff and then like, oh, hey, I did all this. Now I get some money and get to do some cool things. And like starting out it was just him and friends watching movies talking about movies and filming movies which i think is super cool if we were to make a documentary about our origins if we were to call it the whatever film club yeah and, and title the movie what do you think it would be i think it'd be awesome no the top tier. the title Wait, what's the, oh, what would the title, the title be <laughs> It'd be popcorn. Yeah, of course list. it would be awesome. It would be well, that's something, just a given. Something with like popcorn seeds. Popcorn oh, that's seeds. good. Yeah. I like that. How one. the popcorn pops club <laughs> or yeah. something like that. Or yeah. corn seeds. Corn seeds. Um, the Studio One Door Film Club. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Uh, let's wrap things up here on this show. Let's talk about some number one recommends. Uh, talk about things we've seen recently here that we think uh, you beautiful people out there should check out. Uh, David, as a special guest this week. Why don't you take us, uh, start us off here. What's uh, something you watched that you think people should check out? So which camera am I looking at? That camera? You're, that you're, one? Uh, you're, you're one. You're one. I'm one? Yeah, all right, you're one. All right, all right. So I don't know if you guys caught up on this. I'm a big anime fan, mm-hmm. like big a- like Japanese animation fan. Yep. So as a devoted fan of this series, I'm going to recommend a show if you are feeling like watching a gothic horror action adventure. Around the World, Murder Mystery, Gangster, Jailbreak, Old Western, Amnesia, and How to Get Rich Story. Whoa! I recommend JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. There you go. Is that what this is from? That's a laundry list. Yeah, Yeah, that was the pose I was doing. Okay. Oh, okay. Makes sense. Yeah. It it, all comes full circle. It comes full circle. You see, I know, I know. I've been preparing for this for a year. Yeah, that was a very well... That is a, yeah. a lot of those things you mentioned are kind of things I do like. Yeah. And, and I have heard a little bit about this show, I think. It's so. pretty crazy. Um, if I had to do a synopsis for it, it would be um, follow this family lineage fighting the world's evils. Okay. Cool. Speaking of the world's evils, Ryan, I see you've uh, written down your uh, number one recommend. Why don't you let us know what are you recommended in this week? Saw X. <laughs> They were, that's now the that's now that's now the second movie this summer or this year that has had X in the title represent yep. ten and probably the second best one of those two. I think you think you think, you think you think Fast X was better than Saw. Oh X? no, I was thinking of X as in Pearl. That X came out Pearl like last year. last year. Yep. First of all, second of all, it was Triple X. Third of all, actually, now that I think about it, I think it was closer to 2020. Yeah. So three years ago. Yeah. Anyways, back to Saw X. Uh, 
I liked it. I thought it was good. Um, I hadn't seen a Saw movie in a while in theaters. I wasn't able to watch Spiral in theaters, though. I think that was the last one that came out. Yeah, it was uh, It was great to see Tobin Bell again. Um, I haven't seen him on the big screen in a while, and especially not in his traditional uh, Saw role. Um, but, no, I thought it was good. It was entertaining. It was fun. The kills were cool. If you like that, the Saw franchise, you're going to like this one. Um, and it's kind of, you know, the traditional uh, you have a choice, live or die, the choice is yours kind of thing. So mm-hmm. it was good. I enjoyed it. I'm going to keep mine a little bit shorter because uh, I'm only we only know of the first half of the season so far, so I'm not going to say too much, so that way I don't have to walk back as much in case I change my mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, Low-key season two, the first half of the season, has been out so far. Uh, I remember the first season of Loki. That was probably the first of those Marvel TV shows that I was like, this could have been a movie. Yeah. We'll have to wait and see if I feel the same way with this one. But so far, overall, I've liked a lot of the acting. I've liked a lot of the characters. Um, We'll have to wait and see where some of the other plot lines and everything go. But uh, overall, I don't think it's too... It it isn't too bad of a Marvel property here Mm -hmm. right now. And hopefully it'll explain a little bit more of the multiverse and everything, too. Yeah. But uh, that's going to do it for this episode of Popcorn Bucket List. David, let us know, where else can people find you? you got some other content out there, right? Yes, my YouTube channel is Davinator12. Not Davinator1212, that's a different guy. Uh, I usually just You're talk- just the 112. Yeah, I'm just Davinator and then 12. Two. Yeah, not 1212. 112. Okay. Davinator12, right? Not the other dude. Uh, I focus on anime content, uh, usually most about... Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, since okay. I'm a huge fan. Yeah. So if you want to watch my content, go for it. Cool beans. Hey, I feel your pain, man. There's like four Omni Entertainments on YouTube here, and I think we're like second, so we're coming for you. We're other, coming. We're, we're, we're coming for you, we're other you. Omnis. There can only be one. There uh, can only be one. Anyways, also, uh, check out the Marshall Six Theater for the latest premieres and some of the past ones we have talked about here on this show as well. For myself, David, and Ryan Myberg, we'd like to thank you so much for watching, and we will see you at the movies.